Some of the most memorable, the most challenging, and the most epic moments in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim occur when you're traversing the mountains and suddenly your controller vibrates violently as a giant monstrous dragon emerges on the cliffs above you. Cue the explosive drums as the game's brilliant soundtrack warns you of the impending doom. As huge fans of this magnificent game, we know full well how awesome these encounters are. So in this video, we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to give you a quick rundown of every single named dragon in Skyrim and all of its DLCs. What better place to start than with a dragon who started it all, bringing the dragons back from the pages of history and saving your hide in Helgen. This is Alduin the World Eater. Alduin is the self-proclaimed firstborn of Akatosh and he is seen as a malevolent force who destroys the world periodically. When the Nords see his black scaled wings on the horizon, they know that the end of time is nigh. In dragon tongue, his name can be separated into three words, destroyer, devourer, master. The Dragonborn comes into contact with Alduin multiple times throughout the main questline until the final showdown beneath the kaleidoscope of colors in the skies of Sovngarde. Next up, we have a dragon found in the Dawnguard DLC, more specifically in the realm known as the Solcan. Dunavir, meaning Curse Never Dying, is a unique dragon that can be summoned. You can summon Dunavir after defeating him in the Solcan. Dunavir made a pact with the Ideal Masters to guard Valerica in the Solcan until her death. Only she is immortal, so Dunavir was forced to serve undying for all time. Crossala, the frost dragon located outside Nechardak in Solstheim, is a dragon added in the Dragonborn DLC. In Dragon Tongue, his name means Sorcerer Day Mind, and his voice lines in the game suggest he works closely with the legendary dragon priest Mirak. As the Dragonborn and Neloth of House Telvanni approach the Dwarven Ruin during the quest, The Gardener of Men, Crossala will make his appearance known with his Blast of Icy Death. Next up, we have three dragons who live inside Hermaeus Mora's realm of Apocrypha and must be defeated during the quest at the Summit of Apocrypha in the Dragonborn DLC. These dragons are Kruzakrel, Relonakiv, and Sarotar. While the former two resemble typical dragons and must be defeated within Hermaeus Mora's realm, the third, Sarotar, resembles a serpent with a round skull and a unique blue tinge to his scales. The dragonborn must tame him with the bend will shout before riding him to face Mirak. Mermelnir may be a simple brown dragon, but he is one who will likely hold a special place in all of our hearts. The dragon is the second you will encounter in your travels after seeing Alduin and Helgen, and he is the first you will battle, providing you with your very first dragon soul. The dragonborn ventures forth from the gates of Whiterun with a band of guards heading to the Western Watchtower where Mermelnir is wreaking havoc. Depending on your level, this may potentially be one of the more difficult dragon encounters as he serves as the perfect introduction to the dangerous province of Skyrim. As you travel the frozen, forgotten vale in the Dawnguard DLC, dealing with all manner of enemies from frost giants to frost trolls to corrupted Falma, it seems as though things can't get much worse for the Dragonborn. That is, until the mighty dragons Narsalarum and Voslarum burst from the depths of the frozen lakes surrounding the Portal of Resolution. These unique named dragons have arguably the coolest entrances of any in the game, and in tandem they make for quite a challenging battle. Nargaliv, which translates to Fury, Burn, Wither, is a fire-breathing dragon buried in the Dragon Mound just southwest of Rorikstead. Once resurrected by Alduin, Nargaliv makes it his goal to pester the inhabitants of the small farm town and falls upon the Dragonborn to stop him from burning the place to a pile of ash. Our next named dragon is one you will remember from the most memorable missions in the main questline. The Dragonborn ascends Dragon's Reach, where a great trap has been prepared for one of Alduin's closest allies. After using the Thum to use the call Dragon Shout, Odaving, which translates from Dragon Tongue into Snow Hunter Wing, will appear. Once he is brought to your side, he will be made an invaluable asset as he can be called any time as long as you are outdoors and he cannot be killed. Next up, we have the former lieutenant to Alduin himself, the current leader of the Greybeards and the dragon who sits atop the throat of the world. If you hadn't guessed this already, this is Parthenax. Parthenax is known for being the dragon who turns the tide of war in favor of men, betraying the world eater. Parthenax is one good dragon and maintains his kindness to men even in the face of death. It is thanks to this old dragon that men were able to learn the Thum. Saloknir is next, and he is one of the dragons brought back from the grave by Alduin just east of Kynesgrove. When you encounter him during a quest of Blade in the Dark, he taunts the Dragonborn, announcing that he plans to deliver your death to Alduin and your soul to Sovngarde. In the dragon tongue, his name means Phantom Sky Hunt. Only three dragons left, and the next up is Vin Turuth, another dragon reawakened by Alduin as part of the main questline. His name means Shinehammer Rage, and he circles Lake Yogrim near his burial mound. 
Vuljotnak, which separates to dark raw meat in the dragon language, is another revived dragon which can be found after the first confrontation with Alduin. He can use either frost or fire breath and resides by his burial site northeast of Sunderstone Gorge and southwest of Sleeping Tree Camp. And finally, we have the dragon whose silhouette can be seen vaguely as the dragonborn crawls through the underground cavern known as Blackreach. In this dank, naturally lit expanse, witnessing Verthriol weave in and out of the giant mushrooms and the ruins of an ancient Dwemer city can be quite a sight to behold. He can be summoned by using the unrelenting force shout on the hanging yellow gong within the silent city. He will then emerge, breathing a jet of fire over the Dwemer fortress, where he will stay for the remainder of the fight. His name can be broken down into Dark over Lord Fire. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel, and if you like this style of video, show us your support with a like. This is quite different to most of the content on Fudge Muppet, so all of your support is massively appreciated. If you want to keep up with everything Fudge Muppet, head to the description and follow us on our social media accounts. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'm Scott, and I will see you next time.